Hey guys, a Duncan update has been long overdue, so here we go. My video editing software did not want to work, so I apologize for the quality and audio of this video, but we're just gonna move on. Okay. I truly okay. cannot say enough good things about this yearling right here. His mind and his sweetness and his brilliance is really just overwhelming, honestly. Like, he's just so stinking sweet and he takes everything in stride. He's so smart. I could just brag about him all day long. We're just working on some pretty basic groundwork stuff to kind of establish uh, respect and boundary and just where to start as soon as I get him out of the pen. And everything is a learning experience. So I do dumb things with him every day, like blow up the aisle and he obviously doesn't care, but I still do them just because I want him exposed and I want him relaxed around our regular everyday chaos, which he's obviously very used to by now. Not only because I want to raise a confident and even-minded colt, but also I have a baby due in February. So anything that I'm gonna be around needs to be extremely safe because soon there will be a baby following me around, following the horses around. So we're gonna be super safe and I want him to be extremely comfortable with everything. I also really want to get like a really good understanding on how he thinks. And obviously at the end of the day, horses are unpredictable. They are flight animals. So we have to be wary of that. However, I really want to see how his brain works, how he processes things, what he's most likely to react to, and how he's likely to react. So we're doing all these things, and here comes the drama of putting a saddle on my yearling. So like I just said a minute ago, I have a baby coming, like a human baby, coming in February or January, whenever he decides to come, really. So that being said, I will be taking a couple months off of any intense work come the new year and slowly working back into things as I heal and everything else. So my plan with little Mr. Duncan here is to just get him overly comfortable with everything, desensitize, get him really, really just going, but not overwhelming. So we're just going to go with you know exposure and get him really really comfortable with everything and then he's gonna have a couple months off and maybe late next year he'll start under saddle um, whatever he's ready because the other part of this is he's really growthy and gangly like he is just he's huge look at him he's a year old and he's gigantic so I don't want to push him I personally don't see a reason in riding a yearling um, that's a debate for another time. I know that's a hot topic on all social medias right now. I don't see a point in it. It's not something I want to do, so I'm not doing it. <laughs> that's just all there is to be said about that. But given my situation with, you know, having a child in the coming year, I want to make sure he is really, really good and solid and everything else. And again, super confident in what we're going to be doing next year. So then when we do go to do all the fun stuff, he's just like, yeah, whatever, no big deal. So here we're just doing a lot of groundwork and that's pretty much all we do right now is we just hang out, we play and we do groundwork. And every day I kind of just let him tell me what he wants to do that day. We don't even work every day. It's like maybe once a week. I don't know. Whenever we get the time to and the weather's okay. But I really don't go into it with a huge plan of like, okay, we're going to do this with the saddle today or we're going to do this. It's just kind of go with the flow, whatever. But my goal remains the same at the end of every session. I always want him to be relaxed, walk out of a session, relaxed, and keep looking to me. So you'll notice that every time I move the saddle, move the stirrups, whatever, he checks it out. He flips his ears around whatever but he always comes back and looks to me and that's what I reward really really heavily so right here I'm also encouraging him to be super curious check things out because what I don't want to do is shut down any reaction he has I had a little bit of a debate go on on my TikTok the other day about whether or not a colt should be expected to buck when putting his first saddle on and if he does buck then it's because I didn't set him up properly or whatever and personally you can set up a horse as perfectly as you want to everyone does it their different way but I never want to shut down their response or their reaction because most of the time it's them playing. Duncan did this really weird thing the first time I put a saddle on him. He just like, 
danced around. He was playing. He was feeling it on his back. It's a really weird feeling, especially with the cinch underneath. And I want him to be able to express that because what I don't want to do is shut him down immediately and tell him that those reactions and those responses and those explorations of new things are not okay because what will eventually happen there is he will just continue to shut down and shut down mentally physically everything else until he explodes and that can come out in a multitude of ways but I want him to always look to me get his response out whatever and then come back to me and that way he can really stay connected with me and everything else. And one thing I think we can all kind of agree on is horses at the end of the day are flight animals. They have that fight or flight response, but they're going to flight like 99.9% of the time. And if I kind of redirect that flight response and don't engage it, my priority here, especially with the saddle training, is not to engage his flight response. Because once he gets that elevated heart rate and he does run from something instead of checking it out and being curious about it, that's going to be a really hard thing to disengage. That's going to be a really hard thing to bring him back from. So that's why when I put the saddle on, and this was the first like really cold day that I've done any saddle work. So I knew he was going to be a little cold backed, a little like frisky, get his little booty butt tucked underneath him. I knew that. So when I brought him back out to the round pen, I didn't immediately start chasing him around the round pen. What I don't want him to do is associate the round pen or work or anything else like that with just running and being chased and having to get his physical energy out like that. I want him to move around and I want him to think expressively. I want him to engage his curiosity and everything else like that, but I don't want him to feel like he has to physically break down in order to listen. Like I want him to feel that saddle on his back. I want him to get comfortable and get those big sighs before he goes and does any physical exertion. Because at the end of the day, I don't want a horse that I have to lunge for three hours just to get him to pay attention to me. I want him to want to be curious and be like, oh, hey, what are we doing today? This is going to be fun. And really think instead of just having to run in circles until he's so physically tired that he has no option but to pay attention to me and to be relaxed about things. That being said, also, I don't want to, what's the word, dumb down his responses by getting him physically tired so I'm not trying to lunge the energy out of him so he has less of an explosion when I put the saddle on which he never had an explosion but what I'm getting at is here let the horse tell you what he's comfortable with take it slow there is no rush like there's no contest it's if you're starting your own colt if you are training something you should be doing it for yourself and the horse not for a contest for a show or like okay we're gonna make this this show next year like we I don't even know what the heck we're doing next year especially with the child in the mix we are just taking this day by day because it's thoroughly enjoyable for both of us like he's obviously having a great time with the ball and just checking everything out he's so social he comes he'll leave his food to come up to me at the gate he's such a sweet loving boy and I just love watching him think so you should be doing it for the enjoyment not for the putting a timeline on it. Now you'll see here, I do two things. I know from Diesel, keep in mind they are cousins and they literally share a brain cell. Um, <laughs> but I know Diesel does not like things above his head. So he doesn't like things being raised above his head, which is exactly what I'm doing with Duncan here. And he doesn't like things going on like in the saddle behind him in his peripheral vision. So I really wanted to focus on that with Duncan because I knew it was going to be kind of a, a point of tension for him. And he really figured it out pretty quickly. He really just chose to be curious about it and play with it rather than run away. And the other thing I want to note here is you'll see me hang on to the lead rope the entire time. And that is not to disencourage him from either running away if he feels the need to or having that flight response but again keep in mind I am like seven months pregnant here and I want to keep as much control of the situation as possible look at him he's so stinking cute so if he does choose to turn and run I just want to be able to catch him before he does that and not let him get his hind feet near my belly that's just a safety precaution 
I know being around horses and pregnant is just a whole another debacle that we can get into another time. But you'll see me then we go over and he just really doesn't care. He's just like, what the heck are you doing? He thinks about it. He more so is like, wait, where'd the ball go? I want to play with it. And that is going to be simulating mounting and dismounting and everything else. I basically want to make him comfortable with things that are significantly weirder and scarier than humans. Because then when a human does get on him, he's going to be like, oh my god, this is so much better than that stupid ball mom had. (laughs) Here you can see him kind of lose focus a little bit. You just see in his expression and his face and the way his ears turn, he just pays attention to something going on in the pasture over there. So I want to make sure I get his attention back before we move on and before we release or dismount the ball per se. This is because I, there's just nothing I hate more than getting on a horse that I don't have the attention of. Because like what happens when they see you and then they don't see you and they're paying attention to something else and then they bring their attention back and it's like oh my god there's a human on my back how did you get there they're gonna panic a little bit so I want to make sure I have their attention through the whole mounting process through everything and that they recognize that something has changed and they see what I want them to see and then we can release it And let's not forget that he is a baby, so after we hang out a little bit and play and do a little group play with the dogs, I let him run around and play on his own and get all his wiggles out because (laughs) even though we got his mental attention and his mental stimulation done earlier, he still wants to run around and play. He still has some energy, so I want him to be able to get that energy out and feel like it's okay to move and feel the different movement of the saddle on his back. Good. Good. Last thing I want him to be afraid of is <laughs> moving boy. forward, but also he's just kind of fun to watch, so I totally watched him go around for a little while. I'm also just going to throw in here that um, I, especially with young horses, don't like to overdo it with round penning. Uh, the circles can just be really tough on their growing joints, and it's just not really something that I find really important to my program. Um, I'd rather them not see the round pen as a place to just run frantically. So that's just my take on that. When we come back inside, I use this opportunity to work on ground tying. He's been introduced to ground tying a lot recently. Pretty much every time I get him out, I've worked on ground tying. He ground ties in the arena and all that stuff. But again, he's a baby. It's not perfect. And if you're not working on it, then you might as well just not have it in your toolbox in the first place. So we always work on it whenever we can. And this is how much, this is pretty much how I introduce it. Once he's relaxed and gotten his wiggles out for the day, I want to encourage him to relax and stand still and find his own rest. And pretty much all I do is just keep him mentally stimulated until he either falls asleep or just chooses to relax on his own. I let him check everything out. This is why I love ground tying because he can come around and he can look at things and he can investigate on his own while also staying at rest. And like I said, he is a baby, so he's not perfect at things. But when he does walk off, he always goes to check things out and investigate and be curious about things, which I love about him. He's not one that just needs to run back to the pasture or, you know, he's not taking the opportunity to get away from me or run out of the barn or whatever. He's really just playing like a little baby. But again, I don't want to not encourage curiosity, so I don't punish him for moving. I just put him back to where he should be standing and let him be at rest there and encourage him to rest there instead of moving around. And then he just goes back to turn out with his friends and food and sunshine and to be a happy little pony. Also, look at his snaggle tooth. I love it. And it just, <laughs> the vet said it should kind of straighten out on his own, on its own eventually, but it just hasn't. And it's my favorite thing. Um, it very much fits his personality. But he doesn't go off to really explore until I completely walk around the corner and he can't see me anymore. And I just, I love it. Like, he's so, he just loves hanging out and playing and everything. It is so sweet. I love him so much. But that's it for Duncan's update. Thank you guys for watching and let me know what you want to see next time.